Hey guys, I'm Alex. And I'm Drew. And today on the Two Man Comic Book Club podcast, we're taking a look at the six issue series Spider Man Blue by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Let's go. I'm never going to get this time right. Just always a little bit of a remix. I could, I can fix it for yeah. the podcast, right? Um, because I I can just change the length of the MIDI trigger. Uh huh. But I always react to it, and if I fix it, people are going to be wondering why I keep complaining about my performance <laughs> you over just here. Finally nailed it. So I just I just leave it. Become bored. Yeah. Um, let us know uh, if you like the uh, variety of the intro music every single yes. episode. Because <laughs> I've gotten it right like one time. I think. Yeah, that was a nice time. Oh, I forgot to get a water. Hope my throat doesn't get scratchy. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Uh, how goes it, my friends? It's good. Feels like I just saw you guys <clears throat> because uh, I just saw you guys like three days ago. Yeah, I guess it's been about three or four days since we last recorded. Was it three days ago? It was on Sunday. What is today? Today's Waffle Today's Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank yeah. you, poor John. Um, yeah. We have some exciting comics to cover today. We're covering Spider-Man Blue by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. This is a six-issue run that yeah. uh, will be familiar if you've read comic books in general that have Spider-Man in them, but have an, it has a nice yeah. touch to it, yeah. I think. Um, before we get into that, though, what you've been reading, yo? Um, I have been reading some. Even though we only met the other day, I I got to go <laughs> to the to get to back to the garage, the shop to have something looked at in my car. And I took what Alex got me for, I don't know if that's in, in focus or not. Um, what Alex got me for two man Christmas. Yes. The department of truth volume one. How is it? James Tynion, uh, Martin fourth. Simmons, uh, letter, uh, Adit- Aditya Bidikar. Um, anyway, it's it was really good. I will say the spiciness rating of this is significantly high. Yeah. Um, so it's not for everybody, but I loved it. Like yeah. I was sitting there reading it while I was waiting, and like as soon as I got home, I I was just because I made it like through the first two books, uh, and I sat down and just had to keep reading it. And it was really good. Um, I can't really give it, I can't talk about it without completely spoiling everything. Yeah. Uh, just know that. Maybe you can read the back. Uh, let's what are see. Called? Cole Turner has studied conspiracies all his life, from flat earth theory to the assassination of JFK, JFK to modern day crisis actors. But he isn't prepared to live in a world where collective belief. No, well, it's already given too much away. So um, <laughs> it's because, like, I feel like every issue gave gave you in, insight to where, like, you're like, huh? like yeah. I, I actually, if I'd been drinking, I might have done, had a spit take for every <laughs> every issue at some point, point. Um, and it might just be because I was programmed for it. But um, it's good. Yeah. So I'm going to put it right here, and both of you need to read it. Cool. Uh, it doesn't matter who first. I would say that Torrance, as I was reading it, it made me think a whole lot of pseudophiles at, at, at various times. So I think you would really enjoy it. I know you would too. The art is pretty awesome. Yes. Yeah. I mean that it's that's why it's like Simon's. It was just artist. It didn't. It wasn't like pencils. Inks. Right. He he did it or all. They, they did everything, and <clears throat> it was it's beautiful, like watercolor type stuff, and super like expressionist yeah and sometimes like where you, i'm uncomfortable looking at some of these images but that's kind of the point in a good way yeah yeah i uh i had not read it when i bought it i just kept in comic book twitter mm-hmm. everybody was raving about it i, was I like, mean well i don't i looked the you got uh praise from kieran gill and scott snyder and brian michael bendis right. on the back so <laughs> oh i oh no that was the beginning of one i want to talk about in the next who book. else better to praise your comics yeah. so it's really good um if you if you want something gritty if you want something that uh tackles some very like dark issues some things that like as i'm reading it i'm like huh 
You know, yeah. I've always wanted to be a conspiracy theorist, and <laughs> this was fodder for the fire. So what a hilarious thing to say. Yeah, I've I always mean, wanted to be a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I'm not. It it comes with a. There's a game that I'm I'm playing with Torrance right now, mm-hmm. and the, my guy that I play in there is a conspiracy theorist because I want to believe that aliens are out there. I want to I, yeah. I want to believe that the government covered up uh, Area 51, all that stuff, but I don't have the time to devote to the forums yeah. and everything like that. So I don't. I just pretend. Faux show. So that's what I think. I may have read some other stuff, but right. in fact, I know I did. But what you been reading, yo? I have not read any comics since we last met Sans, the stuff that we are covering today and for the next episode. So that would be Spider-Man Blue and then the first five issues of uh, what is that actual run? It's, I don't, is I, it a spectacular Spider-Man? Hold on. I'm going to race you there. I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. Oh, no, I didn't make it. Um, um, the Amazing Spider-Man. God, the Amazing Spider-Man. Nick Spencer. By Nick Spencer. First five issues. First five issues. Yeah. <laughs> from 2018. Yeah. So I read those um, just in preparation for this. And uh, otherwise, Katie, I almost said begged. She absolutely did not beg me. She told me that I would probably like this book that she had just finished, like a book book. It's called Bear Town. I'm she like, finished it while we were reading uh, or watching Captain America yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. So I started reading that. I'm like seven or eight chapters in. It's good. It's a uh, uh, Frederick Blockman. Bachman, uh, I think, is the author. Is that correct? No idea. Fre- <laughs> Frederick <laughs> Bachman, I think, is uh, his name, and it's about a small town in this forest up north somewhere. And uh, they have like this really good ice ho- junior ice hockey team, and that is the only, the only good thing about this town. Everything mm. else is just like they have nothing to be excited about. But for some reason, it just happened to be that their ice hockey team is really good, and uh, it's I'm starting to find out that they're about to play this big game for a championship. That if they win, will put them at the top of the list probably for this new um, hockey school, kind of like a. Like, you know how in uh, England or in, in Europe in general, they have, like, socks that – socks, schools. Wow. They have schools for soccer. Like, it's a high school, but it's, like, understood if you're going I to see. this high school, you're being trained to go be a professional soccer player one day. Hmm. So it's the same thing for hockey. They're trying to get there, and then it's, like, maybe they're going to see what kind of shady things the community will do to make sure that their uh, town is selected. Um, the first, the very first page says something about somebody walking into a forest, the shotgun and shooting somebody in the face. And it is like, this is how we got there. Chapter two starts. So, uh, pretty intense so far, but, uh, good. I'm going to actually read some other comic books tonight. We, uh, we usually have a much longer spread between episode yeah. recording. So I'm usually able to squeak a couple in, but not this time I have failed ye. I'm well, sorry. I've read comic books. I don't know why. I just apologized. I just said I'm sorry. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> Tori, what about you? What you been reading, yo? Well, uh, I read Sweet Tooth, the first two volumes of that anyway. Yeah. Dang, Tori. Uh, I read those like, in the day, yo? yeah. Uh, thoughts? Really good. Uh, it's much darker than mm-hmm. the TV show. I still haven't watched the TV show. The TV show is good. Um, the kids are adorable in that and they are not adorable and the <laughs> you've oh, you've also read yeah 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 um jeff lemire there's even like a, a current like uh sweet tooth returns or something that is ongoing oh i, I read the first one of that the shows out, yeah. Right? yeah yeah um yeah. isn't that a lot how many volumes are there i think there was a total of 40 issues does that sound right <laughs> i think i see 40 volumes yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah. Because I I think that there is six or six ish so I want to say six volumes and then the yeah the returns I feel like it was thirty five or forty I mean I I I started reading it and dug, got into it and basically read it over the course of a day and a half mm-hmm. off and on uh, it is handy that's one of the things I like about indie books where you can just pick one up and read it and you don't have to worry about the rabbit hole you know right you just you just read it and go so. But yeah, that's cool. It's a good one. Um, anything else before we jump into some uh, 
some Spidey Man. Why don't you uh, tell us where we can find our social media accounts? Oh, yes. Uh, We'd love it if you joined our Discord, link down in the show notes and description of this video if you happen to be watching it in that format. Uh, Lots of comic book chat there, Uh, questions of the week, things like that. Also, find us at patreon.com slash two-man comic book club with the number two. If you'd like to support us, it'd be awesome. Uh, You can find us just like shoot us a tweet at two man comic book with the number two or find us on Instagram at two man comic book club or basically just search two man comic book club yeah. and you can find us. I've searched for us recently. Ways. It's getting easier to find us. Yeah. We're popping up in search results way near more near the top. If you type us in, uh, you can find me at Alex Wayne Miller. Wayne is W a Y N E just like Bruce Wayne. Cause I am Batman. Uh, that's my social handle for everything. It's even my email account. Don't email me. Because my social media is so convoluted, just go to drewmorrismusic.com yeah. and you can find a way to reach out. Tori, where can they find you? You can find me at Drew Morris Music, <laughs> uh, just anywhere on the web. Yeah. Hey, that's great. Obviously, yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, Spider-Man Blue, this is a six-issue uh, series. They actually In have... 2002. Yeah, so it's it's old at this point. It's 20, year, oh, 20 years old now. Wow, didn't even think about that. Um, this is definitely one that comes up in a lot of lists of mm-hmm. like some of the more essential Spider-Man That's reading. basically what I did whenever I was like, hey, what Spidey could we cover? And I just cross-referenced a couple different lists. Mm-hmm. This one popped up in a few. Back to Basics popped yeah. up in a few. Craven popped up, popped up on all of them. And, so. Yeah, uh, so this is Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Let me see if I can get the actual credits for everybody, the whole gang. Where it's is not, it? It's not showing up. Is this another uh, comic book? Ron Zimmerman. There we go. Also, Greg. What? Where are you? I don't Friday remember is? any of these. Greg. I, Greg Capullo. Danny Mickey. Dan Kemp. So many. I, I don't know if this is accurate or not. Maybe we'll find it whenever we get to the first. The, the Hold on, it's page. actually in the detail. Oh, you're looking. Is that what you're looking? Is the, yeah, and it has so many people that I didn't remember. The issues. Issue one. Yeah, Jeff Loeb, Ron Zimmerman, Greg Capullo, Tim Sale, Danny Mickey, Dan Camp. This could have been one of those things where like deadlines had to be met. So they're like, hey, we need you to color these three pages or, you know, letter these or who knows. Um, anyway, so we're going to cover this again, kind of higher level. It seems to have been working out like just the flow of everything. We'll kind of give you a big picture idea of what's going on. We, as always, encourage you to go through and actually read these. Um is this the right issue? Book one. Starts with him all in blue. Did I? Is there a different cover? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. My bad, I'm a dummy. You said it, not me. <laughs> Essentially, this run kind of runs the gamut of what Spider-Man's done. Yeah, because so, he, he's looking back. Yeah, he so. he's actually sitting, and we find out in the very first page that Peter Parker is sitting down with a recorder. Well, I will say, uh-huh. we didn't find out he was sitting down. I, in my <laughs> mind, like I, I just yeah. read it and thought he was talking. And I, this is whenever I read the first issue a yeah. while back. And when I came back to it, I realized, oh, there's like a click, whir, click. Whir. So he's right. like talking into a tape recorder. I was imagining him doing this as he was swinging around. Yeah. But yeah, in the sure. very last panel of like the, the last book, we see that he's like sitting up in an attic talking to like a, an actual old school tape recorder. Right. And that kind of, I was just like, man, I wanted to imagine that he somehow had like a micro cassette a recorder. Very tape stable. Inside his uh, mask. Yeah. So he's, he's recording into some old tape recorders through this whole series. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of recollecting on his life. And he's talking to Gwen Stacy, who has died at this point. Yeah. And uh, this whole series kind of reads as a a love letter to her. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, acts as a means for us to like kind of get a recap on everything that yeah. he's been through, not just with Gwen Stacy, but also kind of how he came to be with Mary Jane. I get the feeling that the timing of this mm-hmm. was to snatch a few readers that enjoyed the Tobey Maguire movie when it came out. They were like, hey, let's let's capitalize on this and give everybody a quick recap mm-hmm. of some of the big bads that Spider-Man has met in the past, starting with the one that they just saw in this very same movie. Right. Because <clears throat> we see him zipping around. He drops a little rose on top of a bridge. I'm mm-hmm. assuming it's the bridge that uh, 
Gwen Stacy was thrown from. Right. And he leaves a rose. He says, I, I visit this every year. I don't tell anybody about it. And then, boom, he's talking about whenever he fought Green Goblin. And and I've never, like, this might be one of the first times, well, like I said, I, I say I'm a big Spider-Man fan, but I didn't read anything other than just, like, random issues until we started Spidey Month. Yeah. And there's a lot of Spider Man comics, so I mean, it's fair. I just look at this and the way that Green Goblin is por- portrayed in this, and I'm like, wow, yeah. that is truly Goblin esque. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm looking at it thinking that it was some sort of mutation. No, it's actually just a mask. It's just a mask. So yeah. anyway, he's fighting him. Uh, uh, he, Peter is tied to this chair, and he's being his typical Peter Parker quipping self. But long story short, um. Over the course of the fight, he breaks out and uh, Green Goblin gets knocked out by one of his own pumpkin missile, pumpkin bombs, whatever. Yeah, this was a cool shot. And uh, Peter takes the mask off and it's kind of like we've seen, actually, going back since I've just recently rewatched all of those Spider-Man movies. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting to see. It, It is... The the Raimi book, the Raimi movie, and even uh, No Way Home are like right. more true to the psychosis or whatever the term would be for um, what's going on inside Norman Osborn's mm-hmm. head than I would think because he's like he doesn't remember. Yeah, he it he's is a little bit of a dual personality kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's just like he there, something's locked behind a wall. He doesn't know right. what the other half of his life is doing. So he's just so Peter decides to spur them on. He was like, I could let. Green Goblin die right here Mm -hmm. and my problems would be over, but I can't do that. Right. So he takes him out, talks to the firemen. They're like, what, what happened? He's like, Green Goblin's dead, you know, but get Norman Osborn to the hospital. Right. And it's just kind of like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. And he's going to talk to J. Jonah Jameson about, you know, selling, yeah, selling some of these pictures that he took and gets tipped to, uh, you know, somebody's wanting to cover a story coverage of Norman Osborn being in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So he offers to go check him out. And he gets there and he runs into Harry and they kind of talk, they catch up a little bit. And as he's leaving, he sees this blonde-headed lady with Flash and Harry. And we learn that it's Gwen Stacy. Yes. And this is like when he first met her. And she gave him the look. Yeah. And, you know, there's other stuff that happens. He decides to go buy a motorcycle to get around. And, and he, impress Gwen a little yeah, bit. Yeah, impress Gwen. One of the last scenes is him driving off with Gwen clutching to him. And then a, a shadowed figure knocks on the door of Aunt May's house and starts talking to him or talking to her. And we're just like, I wonder who this is because it doesn't say, but we will find out in issue two. Oh yes, we will. Yeah. So this has just kind of been narrated the whole time by Peter and essentially it's just, all right, we're going to get a very quick overlook at him fighting green goblin, his relationship with Harry. Mm -hmm. And when he first met Gwen and, um, you'll kind of find that the bulk of these issues kind of have that same thing. Like they're, they're very surface level. They're very simple. You need, zero point of reference yeah. for any of this to jump in. So I would kind of argue that this is like one of the best. Yeah, I've never read Spider-Man comics. I want to get caught up relatively quick. What do I do? If you, if you don't Spider-Man need Spider-Man blue, if you don't need an origin story, <clears throat> right? then yeah, this is good. This yeah. is a, a great one. That's, that's kind of what we went with, with a lot of these that mm-hmm. we picked like back to the basics is another one. That's pretty right. good. Gives you a good intro. Uh, one more day is one if you want to yeah. establish something for the and Craven's yeah. Last Hunt's just a good one. So right. yeah. I would argue these. Craven's Last Hunt is the one that requires the most kind of yeah backstory or information to kind of because you were we're we're diving into just like the absolute making and what builds and creates Spider Man, what makes him tick, you yeah. know, and uh why that's interesting. So but all of these are um definitely go down a little easier, mm-hmm. I will say. Uh, also love this cover for issue two with Gwen Stacy as yeah. the backdrop and Peter the covers are across. covers are all pretty striking for yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we start, I <laughs> like the Spider Man is just hanging, reading an, an article that he you know took yeah, the pictures is a great for page in front of a, a little newspaper stand. The guy's like, "You gonna buy it? This is, this ain't a library or something like that." 
Um, and as when Spider-Man zips off, somebody with very menacing eyes uh, steps up and takes it. And this yeah. is like the first time we see this person will keep seeing um, for a while. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that was just kind of the introduction of this mystery person. And then we jump to, I guess they're in college. This yeah. looks like a high school lab to me, but anyway. Uh, like a small community college. Yeah. <laughs> like Flash and uh, Gwyn. I don't know if Harry's there, probably not. Um, but they're all just kind of working. And I think it's just trying to give they're you They're flirting a little yeah. bit the first time, and they invite each other for a study session. Introduction of how Whoa. Flash is a is a jerk to Peter. You yeah. Know? Um, but then all of a sudden we we realize that somebody has broken the rhino out of his, where he's been in isolation. Mm-hmm. And uh, Peter swings off to go fight him. And over the course of the fight, a little piece of his suit breaks off. Yes. So since we, I mean, we already know that Peter has a bit of a science bent, not a bit, mm-hmm. he's very scientific, but he goes and takes it at, while still dressed as Spider-Man to Dr. Kurt Connors, um, who actually we've probably talked about him. Have we talked about him on this show yet? Um, I can't remember. I don't know. It's the lizard. Okay, <laughs> I was I was trying to decide if we yeah. wanted to hold on to that for a minute. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Kurt Connors is missing an arm, and he's been working for a long time to try to figure out how to regrow it. You know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Peter brings this little piece of the suit to him, and Kurt Connors is able to help him come up with something uh, that Peter goes back out and starts fighting the rhino, and he has these polymers or whatever in his webs mm-hmm. that eventually break down the suit. <laughs> and meanwhile, Reiner's just sitting there as his suit is literally melting off of him. Yeah, this was a uh, yeah. hilarious panel. There we go. And so <laughs> it, it ends, and... I'm going to do that exact thing for Halloween. And the the uh, the, the mystery man is once again looking on. Um, so then we Peter goes home, and basically... Somebody he's talking to Aunt May and somebody rings the doorbell and this is right when Peter's about to go to that study session with Gwen. Yeah. He goes, somebody rings the doorbell. And little MJ, the the daughter of a friend of his mother, you yeah. know, he's comes to the door. And I think at some point in this he's talking about what do I care about MJ? You know, he's like, yeah. she's just a little girl, not important at all. And then she opens the door and she looks like your typical sixties bombshell type. Yeah. Lady. They uh they definitely hint at like kind of Aunt May has been trying to set Peter up with MJ, who is her cousin's niece, I think, or something. Not they're not they're not family, her like her best friend's niece. Um and she she opens the door and she's like, Face a tiger, you just hit the jackpot. Yeah. I have a question about that. Go ahead. One of the books I'm reading, the one that was the continuation. No, no, it wasn't the continuation. I started reading another random no, maybe it was um, the one that started with Brand New Day. Mm-hmm. Does MJ ever become a superhero called Jackpot? If she does, I'm not aware of it. Because there is a superhero named Jackpot oh. in these books that looks a lot like her. Interesting. And she keeps calling Spider-Man Tiger. So I'm just like, the parallels are are too... Yeah, that's a lot. Um, so. I If that character exists, I don't know about her. Um, but that'd be very surprising. Maybe it's from uh, the Clone Saga. <laughs> yeah, I always just interpreted this panel as just her. She, early Mary Jane especially, tends to kind of be feeling herself quite a bit. Like she's uh, yeah. aware that she's very pretty and mm-hmm. she's a model and she's an actress and, yeah. you know, thinks that she's a catch. Yeah, so that's so. how it ends. And, and you see Parker, Parker's just kind of like, oh, well, va va voom type of a thing. So, <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of a hubba bubba moment. So now he's... Uh, Got the hots for two two gals. Yep. <clears throat> Let me pull up. Uh, Though I will say, three. based on how he's talking, even in the moment and the narration, it does seem like, yeah, Mary Jane's there and it's complicating things, but he's still dead set on Gwen at this point. Hold on, my comic. What you're looking for? Being dumb. Oh, you haven't met. Well, you want me to go ahead and start three while you're yeah, digging. Go ahead. I'll. You can just watch so and talk about this it. This is. I feel like we're in happy days here for a little while. Flash <laughs> is. Uh, basically trying to move in on MJ and Gwen at the same time and not understanding why both of them seem to be fixated on Peter at the moment. And for whatever reason, you know, uh, 
they're they're just sitting there talking, and I th- you the the way that Gwen and MJ get along, it almost seems like they're both toying with each other as much as they are with Peter. Um, right. But Gwen is kind of looking on like there's something that MJ has with this guy that I don't have yet, and mm-hmm. I want it. And then a news briefing comes on of the lizard. And MJ looks at him. And she's like, "Isn't this something you need to uh, take care of?" And you're like, "Wait, wait, wait. What is you?" Know? And then we find she's talking about to get pictures. Right. So uh, he jumps on to his bike, and he was like, "How am I going to get through? You know, I can't just walk up to it." And she was like, "Leave that to me." Mm-hmm. And so she basically they they roll up on the crime scene. She distracts the cop, and uh, in time for him to run in there with his camera. Right. You know, but then he in in this place where the lizard is, he finds the lizard's uh, wife and son Mm -hmm. who, you know, they have a history. So he's just talking about them and talking to them and goes off looking for the lizard and they fight. And it's obvious in case we haven't said when Kirk Connors is the lizard, he, he knows nothing of Kirk Connors. Right. So it's just like, uh, Spider-Man is having to fight him Mm -hmm. like legit fight. And finally they're, you know, he kind of knocks him out. And I think we have a little bit of like kind of jumping back to a few places here or else he, oh no, he, he got away for a minute. That's right. Right. Uh, because we have like one panel that come, one page that comes in where him and MJ are talking again. But regardless, Spider-Man tracks him back to his lab mm-hmm. where he restrains him with webs and apparently has a, a, a cure, you know, so something that either he whipped up or... Dr. Connors did, and he's able to administer it literally just as the wife is like turning the key to open up the lab and they walk in and they all embrace and everything's great. Everything's hunky dory. And then we have a little closing scene where Harry Osborne is basically asking, Hey, Peter, what's the deal with MJ? You care if I ask her out? And also, do you want to live with me? Oh yeah. That, yeah. that's a pretty important part. Yeah. So, so in one fatal and fatal sweep, he uh, goes for, what he thinks is Peter's girl and also says, Hey, will you be my roommate? <laughs> it's free. Hey roomie. Yeah. Uh, got time to keep going. You want to take a quick break? Catch our breath. Cool. Let's More. catch our break and we'll be right back. And hey. we're back. <laughs> I always like the way for it to drop down a little bit. Oh, like whenever you were pointing, I thought you were saying you take it. Oh no. <laughs> we're back with uh, issue four of Spider-Man blue and Drew's going to keep on keeping on. So we enter uh, Aunt May's house, which I've got to say, I always picture it like we saw it in Queens, you know, like row houses, just these houses after houses. This looks more like a nice little neighborhood up in northern New York. Anyway, that's not important. Um, So Aunt May and Peter need to have a talk. They both like actually say it at the same time. Uh, And I think they're actually both wanting the same thing. Yeah. But uh, Aunt May is like, so look. Uh, I think I'm going to move in with MJ's aunt. Uh, is that okay? And, you know, they kind of have a talk, and she was like, and by the way, I do think you need to move in with Harry. Right. That he was like worried idea. that she would be upset that he was leaving to go live with Harry. She and was she's worried like, about the same thing. <laughs> Peter's like, were you listening? She's like, well, Harry's voice kind of carries. And yeah. I've, I've never, I've always got to keep an eye on that boy. And she also makes a comment about MJ. She's like, if you want MJ, you need to tell Harry. Right. So it's funny, like, just this quick, like, Aunt May, the wise. Mm-hmm. So uh, then we cut to uh, a prison. I don't know where it is, but it doesn't matter. And we see a guy who just from the first frame, oh, yeah. my assumption is Vulture. Yeah. Uh, and that is. And somebody's like attacking him, trying to get the information of like where, like we know you, there's got to be a set of wings out there somewhere. And mm-hmm. and he finally tells him. Um, and then a, a, a guard comes up and pulls him away. And then we have a little sh- conversation. Uh, it's, it looks like Aunt May being dropped off at MJ's aunt. I don't remember what her name was. Yeah. Um, and something Watson, <laughs> <laughs> astute. Um, and Peter's walking her in, and MJ comes out and kind of flirts as she hops into Harry's car. Yeah. And drives off. Um, they kind of discuss that they're going to have a party later for kind of a, a, a housewarming, housewarming party. That's right. Yeah. And speaking of the housewarming party, it's it's the night of and. Uh, Somebody has broken out of the that that uh, the prison prison. I'm good at words. Yeah, words are hard, man. Yeah. So uh, and the, 
they go to the location where supposedly the, the wings have been left and he finds them that it's the dude that was like roughing them up. He has been, you know, the, the store age old story of sneaking them out in the, the laundry. In the laundry. It's like, I guess they don't have on site laundry. I here. just watched Shawshank Redemption yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Red is a guy that knows how to get you things. Was it for the first time? Oh, no. Okay. For the better part of 20 years, it was my favorite film. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was actually, we watched it, or I watched it with Rodney virtually. Uh, he had never seen uh-huh. it and he loved it. Great movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's very rated R. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, Peter is like swinging his way to get to his housewarming. Yes. Um, and you can see that I think this is like a throwback because I remember whenever I was lis- listening to my marvelous year, they talked a little bit about uh, MJ's go go dancing and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I think that they're, uh, Jeff Loeb and the artists are trying to recapture that because yeah. MJ and Gwen. <laughs> and Gwen are like dancing in front of these giant picture windows and Flash is just looking out because he thought he saw Spider-Man zip by. Yeah. And Peter even makes a comment. He's like, I love doing this to to Flash. All know? right, that's the running joke like forever, right, is Flash Thompson always beats up on Peter Parker and is simultaneously his self-proclaimed biggest fan of Spider-Man. Uh, yeah. So it would probably ruin him <laughs> if he knew the kid that he thought was a nerd. Yeah. I, I, I thought about that the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what did... Oh, wait, no, we did know. Never mind. Forget that. Um, I don't remember Nothing. what I was saying. Yeah. So uh, anyway, while he's zipping through the air, Vulture comes and slips, cut, cuts uh, his uh, web. His webs, yeah, with but, his wings. Uh, Spider's like, you're not the one I know. And basically what happens is they get into a fight, and that's kind of where it ends. We see that Spider-Man didn't make it to his story. Or mm-hmm. his story. What am I saying? To the party. Words are hard. <laughs> Uh, he didn't make it to his party because he kind of got knocked out by... Yeah, this is uh, Blackie Drago or yes. Drago. Mm-hmm. I don't know much about other incarnations of the Vulture, but I guess at one point this guy was the yeah. Vulture for a okay. while. But he kind of knocks him out and Spider-Man, the, the issue ends with him like blacking out, laying in a pile of snow on a rooftop yeah. while everybody's having a big old party back at Waiting the, for the new show up. home site. Yeah, and it's like also just to kind of keep the thing going he's talking about he's recollecting that he knew that like both mary jane and glenn were glenn gwen were waiting for him to words show is up. hard yeah <laughs> glenn stampy <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh on to issue five and this one kind of picks up the next morning where uh harry like very suspiciously opens the door and he's like oh so you're finally here you missed the party and peter comes walking in and he's like not feeling so well because it shows yeah. like an imprint of where he had like fallen and you know laid for a little while in the snow. And that mystery figure is sniffing. How about this spot. house though that uh, he's living at for free? Yeah. Anytime I see square footage, <laughs> uh, like a in New York, but just be anywhere, yeah. I get jealous because right now I ain't got it. Uh-huh. Not that I need a ton of square footage, but that that's just that's yeah. This place is massive, and it is in New York, so it's just it's just a little I mean, bit of an Osborne flex. I think there are three stories. Yeah, within this one story, right? Like it's Some just high too ceilings. Big. Yeah, high yeah. ceilings <laughs> with these giant windows. Yeah. That's 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 more than he pays Pretty more cool. in a month than I pay in a year. Wish somebody would ask me to live there for free. Yeah, come on, Harry, Harry Osborne. I'm okay if you eventually become a supervillain. Yeah, I'll move in with you. Um, so anyway, we, we jump back and we see the vulture who like the old vulture yeah. who was laying in a hospital bed. And actually, I guess he's at the, he's probably in jail probably still in the prison in a special room. Basically we see that somebody's talking to him. They knock him out and it's the same ominous figure. Yeah. They're like, you know, you just got poisoned. Yeah. You know, what always happened. You know, what is always on the other side of a poisoning, the antidote yes. that I have right here. Um, so anyway, then we go back to the next morning, not back to, we go forward to the next morning. <laughs> Words is hard. And Peter is sick in bed. Yeah. And MJ brings her, brings him some of his, her I, I'm, pronouns are hard too. <laughs> Aunt May brings, what? MJ. MJ. <laughs> Aunt May. <laughs> MJ brings Peter Parker some breakfast in bed is what yes. Drew's what I was. Say. Well, the reason I keep dropping ants because it's her aunt's. 
recipe. Sure. Yes. So I'm mixing ants. Yeah. I'm missing MJ Ant May. They have the same yeah. syllables, similar sounds. Also, I'm just gonna make this comment one time. There are I've said it before in the podcast. Sometimes I have an issue with faces. They can be a little weird to me. Some of these faces, like look at MJ's face here. Mm-hmm. This is a little bit Stepford wife, uh, animatronic. Uh I don't know. Sometimes the faces are a little weird to me yeah. in this, but uh, I, I won't talk about it for the rest of the comic, I promise. They can draw a face better than I can. So while MJ is feeding Parker, Peter yeah. Parker, uh, Gwen walks in and, you know, you just have this moment where they, they want to go to, a, um, I think, a, a show somewhere. Yeah, theater play. And the they're trying to, trying to convince Peter to go with him, and he was like, I'm, I'm sick. I shouldn't be doing this. And while this conversation is happening, he sees Vulture fly by the window. Right. And he's like, oh, crap, maybe he would have gone with him if he hadn't seen that. I forgot also, Gwen was trying to read The Adventures oh, that's right. of Huckleberry Finn to yeah. him. So yeah. like, both of these girls are trying to get oh, yeah. Peter Parker. They're uh, chasing him. And then the guys, I think, also com- uh, comment on this. They're like, yeah. why is Peter up there with both these women sitting in his bed trying mm-hmm. to take care of him? They, they're like, they're just like, oh, he's a nerd. Yep. <laughs> why is this working? It's the age <laughs> of the nerd. So uh, they leave, and you see Peter just standing there watching two vultures fight now, yeah. and he puts on his outfit and goes after him. <laughs> I love this, that one of them is carrying a giant bag with a dollar sign on it. Well, naturally, that's uh, Yeah, I mean, you don't see that as much in nowadays comics, right. but it, that used to be a thing. Um, so anyway, they fight, and uh, the, the bag starts to fall, and one of them runs into a gargoyle type thing, and that starts to fall. And of course, Flash is down there, and the bag of money drops in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> and Peter like swoops in and gets them just before the the gargoyle head falls. I like it, to think that that bag of money is just his man bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a designer. It's like slightly ironic yeah. because he knows who he is. Yeah, and he sets him down on the roof, and he's like, "No, I expect you to give that money back, all of it." And as he's zipping off, he's like, "You know." Flash is one of my biggest fans. Um, I give him a hard time kind of as payback for him being a jerk to me as a kid, but maybe I should be nicer to him. Anyway, he he gets back and he continues fighting the vultures. Yeah. And we don't really see the end of the fight so much. It's just kind of like he 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 takes care of a few of them. Um, and then he's back in his, uh, I said, he takes care of a few of them as if there's more than two vultures. We don't know. I mean, in the multiverse, yes. Yes. Uh, then we're back in Harry's pad and he's walking down, uh, in his robe, feeling a little bit better, I guess. And Flash is recollecting how this awesome mm-hmm. day he had with Spider-Man saving him. Was this where he decides, where he says, you know, I was watching this, you know, thinking about all that, all that Spider-Man's mm-hmm. done and what have I done for my life? So I decided yeah. to do something. Yep. I joined the army. That's and correct. And so that's going to get, they're going to have a party for him later. But kind of the end credit scene for this one, that mystery figure we see is holding a piece of Spider-Man's outfit that seems to have been torn, and he's just sniffing it. Yeah. If, you're, uh, if you've are if you listened to the last couple episodes or if you're a longtime Spider-Man fan, you're probably picking up yeah. by now or have before who this figure I didn't. Be. I, I was there. Yeah. But also, I, I mean, maybe not. But yeah, he's he's not just sniffing it, but he's sniffed it and followed the scent, and he's standing there looking in those gigantic windows yeah. at the crew congratulating Flash for joining the army. Yep, and that is the end of issue five. We're going on to issue six, the final one of the series. Yep. <clears throat> so this one drops us in to that mysterious figure who apparently has a giant screen, yeah. which... Based on just the look of all of this, I, think it's I feel a projector. Like, I feel okay. That makes more sense. Oh yeah, it is because he literally throws the projector in a second. Uh-huh. That completely just uh, changes what I was about to say. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, but yeah, he's watching him fight the scorpion, Doc Ock, I think, and yeah. all these different people. And in frustration, he just throws. He kicks with a Doc, uh, kicks the yeah. projector and runs off. I feel like it's important to say. Through this whole time, Peter has been narrating this. Remember, he's been recording yeah. this whole thing, and he has been kind of telling all of these stories to Gwen, who's yeah. no longer there. So, And he's just kind of reminiscing about her and talking about how much he misses her and all the blown opportunities of him. Every time he's left to go fight, he's, like, what he's if I left just Gwen. Stayed? What if I just stayed? Yeah. You know. So that's been a reoccurring theme that we should mention. So um, Peter, it's, it's apparently Valentine's Day because he has a Valentine. 
And uh, Harry comes in saying, hey, can I use some of your aftershave? You know, and yeah. he's like, why not yours? And he's like, that's all the way in my office or in my other room. Mm-hmm. So uh, he tosses it to him. MJ walks in. So does MJ or M, uh, Gwen and then yep. MJ. I should call him Gwim J. You can. So and everybody's showing up for this pe- uh, party for Flash and, you know, tons of people. Everybody, you know, flashes up there giving uh, a toast or uh, giving a, a speech and everybody's yeah. toasting him. And as that happens, Peter's spidey sense goes off and who comes jumping in through the window but the guy from the last episode we just recorded, Craven the Hunter, who has been apparently pulling the strings behind all of this yeah. to uh, make this happen. I'll say this depiction of him looks way more YMCA yeah. than uh, the Craven's last hunt. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, still a threat. Still has a giant face on his chest. Yeah. Which is interesting. Um, so while this is all happening, he, Peter, like everybody's running away, you know, fleeing the scene. And Peter runs up to supposedly get his camera. At least that's what he tells uh, Gwim J. And he jumps into his spider suit and then chases him off because, oh, I didn't mention this. Um, Craven grabbed. What's his face? Uh, Harry. Harry. Yeah. I wonder why. Oh, he smells yeah. like. The, yeah. So we end issue five of him like getting the scent of and then of Peter's aftershave. Issue six starts with Harry putting on that same yep. scent. So, so he grabs Harry, thinking that he is Spider Man. Anyway, so they they fight and he's able to kind of just pretty easily take him out according to these pages. And in the middle of it, Norman Osborn comes in. Right. And I guess he's better, you know. And I'm. When I saw this, I was kind of thinking, "We're almost done with this story. He's right. not. He's not going to green goblin up us up on us." But part of me wanted him to, just mm-hmm. for how that would complicate the story. But no, apparently he's just grateful, you know, thankful for him helping Harry and all that stuff. And uh, so Peter heads back, and he's in his room, and Gwen just and kind did of. We mention also that. He's been kind of worried this whole time that Norman's going to suddenly remember. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's also why I was wondering right. if he was yeah. going to remember something, but it doesn't seem that he does. Right. So anyway, Gwen gets catches an eyeful of Peter as he's changing with all of his <laughs> muscles <laughs> on <laughs> muscles. I think he has a thirty four pack, <laughs> according to the way this is oh. drawn. Anyway, she she comes in and says, "Will you be my Valentine?" Kind of alluding maybe that mystery Valentine he had earlier was from her. Yeah. And they kiss. And, okay, this next part, I can't remember exactly what he's saying, but he's, like, getting real, talking about how much he loved her and, like, all this stuff. And we see, this is finally, we are back in the present. Yeah, we're watching Peter record this stuff Mm -hmm. right here. And I will just preface what everything you're about to say. These next couple pages, maybe it's just two pages, sold this entire story for me. I was kind of low on it, honestly, before getting here. So... Um, maybe you remember better. I don't want to just sit here and read it all, but essentially he is saying a lot of like real deep things about yeah. his true feelings for Gwen and how Gwen, if it weren't for Gwen, he wouldn't be the man he was mm-hmm. because of everything that happened. And then Peter looks up and sees MJ has been watching. Well, he actually tells Gwen like after your death, MJ came to see me yeah. and like was there for me during this whole thing. And this whole string of events led to MJ becoming his wife. Yeah. And as you're saying, MJ walks in at at this moment while he's recording. And, you know, programmed to be somebody who expects drama at every turn on TV. Right. I'm I'm wondering if she's going to blow up. But he was like, how long have you been there? And she's like, I've heard, or how much have you been here? Long long enough. And she closes by saying, just tell Gwen I said hi. Yeah. You know, just like, okay. So, yeah, there's like this wonderful understanding that like MJ loves Peter so much to know that. Yes, he loved another woman. She's dead, and her husband hurts because of this because he lost somebody, you know, and she's mature enough to know, like, that doesn't mean that he doesn't love her as well, and she just... It's a very nice, mm-hmm. down-to-earth uh, moment. Um, even the way uh, MJ is drawn here is a little more, like, subdued. Like, it's oh, not she is, showing her... She's not the va va voom She's right. just, like, more mature. She she knows. Right, so it's a great character moment um, on top of all of this, where we just had like six and a half or five and a half issues of her being, you know, just this kind of flirty fireball. Um, it just brings this humanity to the character. And it's really incredible because for real, up until this, I've read a lot of Spider-Man. So like, it's kind of like a, 
I'm just felt like I was reading a recap more than a lot of things. Which I really is, feel like that's kind of what it was, which was valuable for mm-hmm. a lot of people, I think. But because of these last two pages, I feel like this is more than just a recap. Now this actually yeah. kind of develops mm-hmm. um, the greater relationship between Peter and MJ. Um, it's just a really good moment in it, mm-hmm. in my opinion. It takes this from what was probably like just a B to me up to like an A. Yeah. So yeah, I dug it. Um, it took me a while to get my head wrapped around the art, but I think it did a lot to make you feel like, okay, this is supposed to capture kind of that, you know, archy yeah. type of timeline, you know, where things were, you know. Yeah, the style in whatever. general, like, um, insinuates nostalgia, I guess. I don't know if that's the correct way to, to say that, but, like, it it makes you, you know, there's a certain, like, skill to be had when you're drawing and you want to... Mm-hmm depict a flashback you know how do you do that well there's like a certain look that is nostalgic for comic book readers in general and honestly just some of older comic books you know this definitely does not look like a modern comic book even 20 Mm -hmm. years ago there were stuff that would still fly today is like oh that looks pretty modern um but this this is definitely very stylized to to kind of invoke those memories i think um yeah really good story uh Mostly a recap, but again, those last couple pages really it really at home for me. I didn't even know Gwen Stacy was a thing. Um, whenever I watched the Sam Raimi movies, oh really? You know, she popped up at the end of one of them, I think. Um, but then I would hear like people talking about, oh yeah, Gwen Stacy, Gwen Stacy, and they're like, oh, she must be important. And Peter's first realized thing. it was yeah, she was the first. So um, yeah, it's interesting. You get to meet several uh, villains that are you know big time for him. Uh, four of the main, well, f- five of yeah. the main relationships that he has. So it's, yeah, it's a good read and it's short, you know, mm-hmm. it reads pretty fast. Right. So. Yeah. what do you think, uh, Tori? Based on what we said. Yeah. Based on what you said, because I already failed at my resolution of. I still think your like batting average is higher than it was last year. It, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, it, overall though, enjoy the ideas, the concepts. I did. Yeah. Um, it was very, like you were saying, just sort of uh, uh, the pastiche was kind of Archie-ish mm-hmm. um, and the Gwen Stacy and the MJ relationship between right. them and, and Peter. But, yeah, that's just what I gleaned from hearing you talk about right. just now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's solid. I still think you should read it. Now, um, this Spider-Man Blue is not the only... Yeah, there's project color. like this. There's kind of a mm-hmm. this color theme. I think they do Daredevil yellow. Yeah. Um, there's there's ones several like that, X Men yeah. gold. Well, or I don't see, know. No, that's not. Those are X, X, the X Men color shade ones are totally different. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that there, there were several, several like this. Maybe there's a Wolverine. Bl- I don't know something black mm-hmm. or I don't know. Um, but I think they're all in the same vein, like kind of giving a recap you know. while adding a little bit of just character. Development. I will say the X Men are like teams. X Men Gold is right. a team. X Men Blue is a team. Yeah, so those like, are separate that's from, that's different. But Daredevil Yellow is the one that comes to yeah. mind. I, I think I should check that out. So. Maybe there's a a red. Who's a red? Character? I think that there is. Uh, yeah, there's. That would be the primary colors. So yeah, there's got to be somebody Iron, that's Iron red. Man red. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah. So enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, if you're ready, I guess we can jump over to our trivia. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, are you ready with the faster than? Uh, no. I uh, will start talking and see if something comes out. We're going to move on to our two-man lightning round trivia where the questions are faster than the snipping of the web from the Venture nice. 2. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Yeah, not as it, it was much quicker than me coming up with it. Right. So I currently have two points. Dos. Alex has one point. Oh, no. And we have a few more of these left. So you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll go. Okay. Uh, there have been many writers don the Spider-Man uh, comic during the the history of Marvel. Can you tell me which writer has the longest running time spent writing Spider-Man? This guy wrote oh. uh, Spider-Man for a, a hot minute. I feel like I know. Um, You've definitely heard of this person. That was a gross sound. I'm sorry. I just made that. Um Oh, no, I mean, as soon as you say it, I'm going to yeah. punch you in the face because yeah. I know it. Um, but That's exactly that. Uh, yeah, I can't think. Um, mm, 
Was it back in the 60s, 70s? No. Oh. It's pretty modern. Then I don't know. Um, then let me just pick one out of the air. Dan Slott. That is correct. What? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was a <laughs> total guess yeah. on my part. Yeah, Dan Slott started on Sp- uh, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1, number 648 in 2010 and wrote Among Amazing Spider-Man, also Superior Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, Volume 4, um, a whole bunch of other stuff, and then a reboot for Volume when it went back to Volume 1. Uh, wow. For eight years, he was on Spider-Man. Because I was thinking of somebody who had a long run back in like the 60s. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think... St- Stanley and Steve Ditko did it for a long I thought the, time. The person they? that came in after them is the one that I was trying to think of, and I can't think who that is. But anyway, yeah. wow, I have three points. You have three points. You're killing it. Uh, um, Dan Slott being on a book for eight years, maybe that doesn't sound crazy to you, but that is not normal. Like yeah. Now it's like, oh, you get six issues and you're moving on, or you mm-hmm. get 12 issues and you're moving on. Or if you're lucky... And you, you know, you catch your lightning in a bottle like Al Ewing was just on Hulk for 50 issues, which is a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, if you get a couple of years of the character, it's a big deal. Dan Slott being on Spider Man for eight years is really just doesn't happen anymore. Nice. It's pretty wild. Well, mine um, is just from this random chunk of trivia that I found. Mm-hmm. I did jokingly mention something about a clone. I can't remember who I was talking about, but what was the name of Peter Parker's clone? <laughs> oh, uh, didn't know he had a clone. I don't know if this is from the Clone Saga or if it's something else. Or, um, Nathan Thomas. No, I have no idea. Benjamin Riley. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I never, thought you would know. I, guess that. I thought maybe you had read something and you would know that. No, I don't know what it is. No idea. Here, actually, it says something. Also known as the Scarlet Spider. Okay. Uh, that's okay. That makes sense. Uh, was Peter Parker's clone? He first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man in 1975, yeah. 149. So, yeah, that would have been during the Clone Saga. Yep. Haven't read any of that. I only know from my marvelous year. Uh, yeah. I just made it to 84. So I'm in the 90s. So okay. and it's been. An, I definitely did not read along in the 70s. So I'm just binge listening. Yeah, same. So. Do you have one, Torrance? I do. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe it's I'll get more points. Three to, another round of name that supervillain. Huzzah. It is three to one now, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. <laughs> this Spider-Man supervillain turned to a life of crime after being struck by a bolt of lightning. Electro. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wasn't quick enough. <laughs> what? I thought, so it's different than it was in the, the movie? It wasn't yes. a... Yeah, uh, electric eels. He, he fell, fell in a vat of electric okay. eels. I don't think that was it. Electro. I'm st- I'm st- keeping it close. Yeah. That's keeping good. it that's, interesting. That's good. For yeah. a bonus point, do you know what job he had? Um, Was he... Tech support? L- electrician? Kind of, uh, he was a lineman. Okay. That's, that's what I meant, yeah. Well, I guess those are not the same thing. Electrician works in your home. They don't also well, s- scale poles. Uh, okay, well, that's been it. Yep, that was Spider-Man uh, Blue. Uh, Spider-Man Blue, Jeff Loeb, and Quick Tim read. Sale. Yeah, if you want some easy, nostalgia. Jump in. Um, again, I think it. I seriously think it's worth reading just for those last two pages alone because of. I'm just a sucker for some humanity, yo. Yep. I like when people are nice to each other and things are grounded, and we all just we all just get along. Like uh, that's why we like Ted Lasso. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Ted Lasso. I think I'm about to make Holly watch it with me so I can rewatch it. I didn't know she had seen it. She she saw episodes, but she was watching Twitch the whole time. Dang it, Holly. So anyway, uh, we kind of mentioned that next week we're going to cover Spider-Man Back to Basics, which is the 2018 run of Amazing Spider-Man, I think. Wasn't it Amazing yes. Spider-Man? Nick Spencer. That reboots as a number one. Uh, it's I think we're, we'll cover the first five-ish. Yep. Five-ish uh, the first ish. one's like really long, so it's more like six. Um, but it kind of wraps up with a little cliffhanger type thing. Um, really interesting storyline. So if you want to read that and not have us spoil it for you, then yep. you got a week. Get after it. Join our Discord. Follow us on social media. Like and subscribe. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you are international and you listen and you have done that already and we have not read it, it's because we still do not know how to access those. If you know how, we can switch our region. I've even used a VPN. 
or or you could switch if you've left us a review and you keep wondering why we haven't uh, screenshot it. Yes, yeah, send and a link. Do anything. We want to read it. We want to thank you for it. Uh, share this podcast with a loved one. Share it with a hated one. Um, and we'll see you next time on the Two Men Comic Book Club podcast. See ya. Two Man Comic Book Club podcast is hosted by Alex Miller and Drew Morris. Our graphic and logo work is done by Tessa Price, and our original compositions and theme music were composed by Drew Morris.